to the starting five for Marquette. Alizea Blockton, who came off the bench against Rice, will get the start. You're looking at Natisha Heideman, the Big East Player of the Year. But the player of the game can state the case is in right now the center crease. Yeah. And about to tip off with Sierra Johnson. We're talking about Lauren Van Clunen making her second straight start, only the third of the season. And the ball in the hands of the player you need to watch. Number three in white, Kennedy Carter. Coming off a 27-point performance and a wire-to-wire -wire win against Wright State. First look off the mark for India Jones. Heidemann, quick three. Good start for the Golden Eagles. I think Asia, see a lot of those, this a lot is of three balls. The part of Keeger's game plan. They want to be efficient in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. Yeah, and if you're open shooted, this is a time where you don't, you, you want to leave it all out on the court. So have a senior do that. I think she's with confidence. She's coming in with confidence. A good showing from her tonight. Jones, third opportunity for the Aggies. It's a done. Texas A&M on the board. Marquette very concerned about the battle on the glass. They want to keep Texas A&M to one and done. And on that possession, three shots. Blocked in for three. So Marquette with those seniors. Blocked in last year's Big East Player of the Year. Heidemann won that honor this year. I mean, when you have those seniors that just have that mindset, they're going to show why they were those Player of the Years. Johnson inside, so Texas A&M early on going to the paint. Yes, and that's what they need to do this whole game is just pound the ball inside and just keep rebounding, whether it's dribbling or getting it into the post. They have to just utilize their size. Van Clooney, good pass back to Danielle King and gets it to drop. Nice ball movement. Marquette maybe got the scare and the shock out of the system. Yes, yes, I think last night was a good time for them to kind of get things going. There is Kennedy Carter, her first J, first bucket of the afternoon. And Marquette was down by nine points with under three minutes left against Rice. Came back, forced overtime, won that game. And even in overtime, just 58 total points. So the fewest points in a win for Marquette in the last five years. Van Clunen, no. And Johnson pulls down the rebound. But I just already see a difference in this Marquette team as I did uh, yesterday. They came out really slow, but this time they're playing with a lot of confidence. Johnson, second chance, and another bucket inside. She's their answer. She is what's going to make them kind of win this game tonight. Johnson came into this tournament top 10 nationally in rebounds per game. Van Clunen, hesitation, turnaround. Nice feathery touch from the SEC logo. They do not win against Rice if it is not for Van Clunen and Selena Lott. Yes, and it's weird because those are their sophomores. Those are their youngest players on the team, and they're the ones that's the glue. They really keep this, this group together. Jones called for a walk. Up against Blockton. And there is Carolyn Keeger. Sold the senior class on the vision of making it to the Sweet 16. Talked to Natisha Heideman. She said when she was recruited by Keeger, a lot of people would have thought she was crazy because of the lofty expectations she was talking about. And there was nothing to prove that Marquette could get to that point. Yeah. But I mean, she bought in, her classmates, her teammates bought in, and now, now they're ready to compete for their first uh, C-16, excuse me. Never happened before. Lost in the second round against Louisville a season ago. King into the trees in the pass. She was looking for a lot. That's a turnover, and it can hear it. Obviously, pro a &M crowd today. Marquette also not phased by this atmosphere, this environment. It was a pro Rice crowd yesterday in that comeback win. Carter no good on the three-point attempt.
Good hesitation once again. Floater for Danielle King. A lot of shot fakes yes. from the Golden Eagles. Yes, and for them to kind of be undersized in Marquette, they are not afraid to attack the paint and Texas A&M Biggs. We saw them go against Rice Biggs, and they're showing the same exact game plan. Nancy Mulkey, six foot nine. That's the challenge they had against Rice. It was a good start for Carter. She's slow getting back down the court. Heidemann in transition three, leaves it short. Can A&M keep up with his pace as we see Carter <laughs> Two times. tying the shoe? <laughs> Two Aggies. <laughs> Going with the bunny ears, wrap it around, double knot it. Pull it tight. So that was a four on five possession with Sierra Johnson taking a little while to tie those shoes. Marquette just wants to get up and go, and it's working. There's Amani Wilborn, another senior, and it's 14 to eight, Marquette. They were not able to play their game at any point two days ago against Rice. This is the pace they want. And there was a moment where we wondered where the seniors were, and they are awake, and they're here. King transition, beautiful, and one, Danielle King. Marquette doubling up Texas A&M with a shot to go to the Sweet 16 for the first time ever. When we return, Danielle King will be at the line. Yesterday in practice, Carolyn Kiger, head coach of Marquette, was playing the role of Kennedy Carter, even wearing the number three on the jersey. We asked her, <laughs> how her impersonation compared to the real thing, and she said, terrible. <laughs> She's got two leg sleeves, she needs one. I think that was kind of threw everybody off. Yeah. <laughs> and then we saw Van Clunen, the half court heave. This is how Marquette Ready. ends the practice. Strike a pose, Marquette. You are playing some good basketball right now. So do you think there is a carryover from the way you saw Marquette practice yesterday to how they're playing so far? Yes, I definitely do. I think they, they were like relaxed, but at the same time they were focused, and I think it shows here. They're playing with a lot of confidence, they're moving, they're playing well off, off of each other, so I think it did show. They're ready, they're locked in. Maybe that Kennedy Carter impersonation was yeah, better than Keegan thought. <laughs> She's one of five from the field. Yeah. Carter has scored at least 27 points in every NCAA tournament game in her career. Only a sophomore, Washington draws contact and will try to put an end to this eight-zip Golden Eagles run. How important is that scouting report? The day before a matchup, going against someone like Kennedy Carter. I think it's very important, but I think it's also just mental. Like, if you feel like you can guard her, then go after it. And you just have to know not just how the plays run, but what she does. And that's hard for young people to kind of tune into. So it's very import important to be focused and locked in when you're guarding someone like Kennedy Carter. Kiger in awe of the killer instinct that Kennedy Carter possesses. And there yeah. is so much time for that instinct to come out. Yes. That win against Rice two days ago, win number 27 the most in single season history for Marquette. Got five players with more than 1,300 career points. However, one of them is Erica Davenport, who hurt her knee back on February 22nd and is out for the season. So Marquette with the turnover. Opportunity here for Texas A&M. And they weathered the storm from Marquette early on. Carter, the response, got it. Yes. And a little pose afterwards. <laughs> Once she gets going, it could be a long night. Yeah, look out and good hands there from Carter. Wilborn the drive. There's Blockton. King, wide open three. And Carter pulls down the rebound. The handles, the finish. Not so much. Johnson blocked by Anderson. And it's going to go back to Marquette. The men's NIT is in its second round, and Texas takes on Xavier today at 4 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Will Glendo here with Asia Wilson. 
And College Station, second round matchup with Texas A&M and Marquette. Van Cloonan, Long J, Selena Lott fighting for the rebound and look at the hustle by Jones, but he's gonna be out of bounds and stay with Marquette. The Golden Eagles won the Big East regular season championship, lost in a heartbreaker in the tournament title game to DePaul. Texas A&M was without Carter in their two game run in the SEC tournament as he forces the turnover. I like how Gary Blair summed it up a couple days ago. Pinky Gate is over <laughs> with Kennedy Carter. Yeah, and it, it was done. She wanted to play right when it happened, so it was never really starting. So had that broken pinky in the regular season finale against Arkansas. Is that Chambria Washington? Juco transfer knocking down the three, and we're tied up at 16. Basketball's a game of runs. We knew this was going to happen. We knew Texas a was going to get mad and wake up. Van Clunen answers the eight-zip Aggies run. Well, back to the pinky. Broke that, required surgery, missed the SEC tournament. This Monday, those stitches came out. She says she is good to go and look the part against Wright State. Too long from Washington. And tough rebound by India Jones. I love Jones's hustle. Like, she's everywhere. She, she doesn't let the rebound just fall to her. She goes out. She grabs it. She gets extra possessions for Texas a and You always need somebody like that on your team. Outstanding rebounding duo between Jones and Johnson inside. This was a roster that Gary Blair had to make over in the offseason. Andrea Howard transferring to Mississippi State. This has been one of the big answers. Kayla Wells, who was called for the charge there. This is something that Gary Blair was concerned about, yeah. Marquette taking charges. Yeah, and he actually wanted the scout team of his to kind of to flop, flop a little bit and, yeah. and make it and simulate how they're going to see it, and he called it. The man's in his 34th year as a head coach. He knows how to scout. Wide open for Selena Lott. No, and there's Johnson with the rebound. Quickly out of her hands to Chambria Washington, the player that Coach Blair says is the one that actually makes them go. Carter with her response, good off the glass. Seven points for Kennedy Carter. Deep three from Heideman. That three ball was not falling two days ago for Marquette, but they're off to a three for six start here. Just four of 23 in that overtime win against Rice. Jones showing some range, wide left. Wilborn wants to run. Coast to coast. Can't get the finish. But this is Marquette's pace right yes, now. Yes, We are not surprised at how fast this game is going, and especially with seniors that are, they, they know that this is their last go around. You have to give it all you got for 40 minutes. Carter cannot get the hometown roll. Marquette basketball. The Aggie fans just saw the replay on the Jumbotron. Offensive foul, Marquette. Marquette the screen. That goes against Wilborn. First on the senior. So now, ball back in the hands of the Aggies. 2.3 differential between shot clock and game clock. Marquette shooting 60%. Texas A&M 35%, but it's a three-point game. Johnson, great position on Anderson. Anderson tried to hold her ground, but is whistled for the foul. When you have a presence like, like Johnson, she just needs to get two feet in the paint. Move her opponent where they're in the restricted area, make it easier for her guards, and just dominate. And that's why she came here. Yeah. Coach Blair said she came to Texas a and to get more touches in the post. Have to. Have to find ways to get open and make it easier for your guards as well. So Van Clunen just ran off and she has returned. She got some abuse 
from Moki the last game. Took an elbow to the nose. Looks like she is okay. And here comes Heidemann with the steal. Takes it the other way. And Marquette extending that lead to five. And that's how the first quarter will come to a close. The defense leading to offense for the Big East. Player of the year, Natisha Heidemann. And Marquette is up at the end of one. And coach Gary Blair doing his pregame tradition of tossing out the candy, even to the Marquette fans. He taught us the secrets to this successful pregame ritual. So the key is sidearm. So it's the side. So we slip. Do this before the ball games. When the team comes out with 24 on the clock after our guest coaches, I come. What else can I do on the board? What you want to do is make sure you get it by the end, like here. Okay, you tuck, sort of like, you tuck it in a little bit. In. Okay, you be in there high, gig them. All right, particularly if they're six four, <laughs> gig them. I'll say a little bit longer. <laughs> he is so loose. Before games, in games, right. practice, everything. Does not matter the situation. His Aggies trail by five going into the second quarter. Huge turnaround for Marquette. They had eight first quarter points against Rice. Heidemann by herself had eight in the first quarter against Texas A&M. And this is big. The energy that Heidemann plays with usually dictates how her teammates play. Yeah, that's the side of a senior and a captain. You know, you're, you got to know your team is going to play off of you. And for her to come out and knock down that three ball to start off a game, I, I guess the team was like, hey, we can do it too. Good defense by Van Clunen standing her ground against Johnson. trying to get shots in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock and right on cue Heidemann hit check Johnson <laughs> rebound you know what that's a shot that Carolyn Kiger's okay with yes you got the green light use it Jones had a good move baseline cleans up her miss and puts it back India Jones four points Second quarter has been a struggle for Texas A&M. Yes, it has been. Nice shot by Amani Wilborn. This is when they typically let off the gas. With the lead or not, Gary Blair has acknowledged that and is not sure what the problem is. You just kind of relax. You think it's probably in the bag or it's too far, and, and, and that's something that you can't do against the team like Marquette. Kayla Wells, the Aggies need her. That's her first bucket of the afternoon. Supporting cast from Carter has got to be ready. Lot. Nice cut by Heidemann. Lot with the vision and the finish. How do you like that, Asia? Man, Marquette, they're just doing the little things, and that's what you love about some good basketball. Just the little things. Backdoor cuts, simple passes, not making the home run play, but just simple little things. I love it, Marquette. They play their best when they are loose, and they are the underdog. They were loose yesterday in practice. They are the underdog here. Back-to-back -back buckets, though, from Kayla Wells, second leading scorer at 15 points per game. King to Van Clunen. Johnson with the block. Carter, the crossovers. And draws the whistle. Someone's Still lost a shoe. shoe. <laughs> Danielle King, you're going to need that one back. <laughs> Second round coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship <laughs> continues today on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. For matchups and game times, go to NCAA.com. All right, so King will go to the bench. She'll lace them up. We've seen three shoe mishaps, <laughs> yeah. and it's not even halftime. These girls are playing out of their shoes. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Carter. Good touch inside the paint. Aggies having a lot of success in the paint. Yeah, that's the bread and butter. Go inside, make them stop you. Here's Anderson trying to get around Johnson. Off the bench is Isabel Spingola. This is her three-point shot. Played two minutes against Rice. Anderson with the drive. 
And Anderson with the travel. Such an interesting dynamic, the way the tournament is structured, that Marquette is a five seed, a and a four seed, but Marquette is playing in what is a true road game with this yeah. atmosphere. Yeah, and that, it's just a tough situation, but you know, you can only control what you can control and play your hardest. Washington in control. Aggies have made five straight field goal attempts. Tied up at 28. Heidemann, short. Carter will keep it alive, but it will be Marquette basketball. So Blockton will check back in for Marquette. So much on the line for the Golden Eagles. No secret. Carolyn Keeger has said the success of this team be dictated on how they play in this tournament and getting to the Sweet 16. It is Chicago or bust for the Golden Eagles. Two slow possessions now for Marquette. This is what AM wants. Blocked in turnaround. Wells was there in her face. And Carter just cool and collected. She gives it over to Washington to bring it up. Carter, guarded by Selena Lott. Kager says she's one of the best defenders in the country. Beautiful feed, and Johnson with the finish. Her passing, just that's the biggest growth that I've seen in her, is just passing, getting her teammates involved. And for her to, that's something you just really can't even work on. You just have to want to do it. And I, I love seeing that growth in her game. Gary Blair says that Carter has to live with the label as a ball hog. Yeah. Well, that's a response to the critics. <laughs> it's okay to be a ball hog. You're making them. And when you're that good, <laughs> yeah. you take it. <laughs> just share it sometimes. <laughs> Heidemann in trouble. Loses the rock. It will stay with Marquette. Texas A&M at home now with the two-point lead. They're starting to heat up. Long Galindo here with Asia Wilson. Trip to Chicago on the Sweet 16 on the line. Texas A&M with a two-point lead over Marquette. And Asia for Kennedy Carter. Sharing truly is caring. Yes, it is. They're all on you, Kennedy. Share that basketball with your teammates. I love it. Easy bucket for your post. It Can't is get no, much better than that. No secret that this team is built. Carter, super aggressive on Blockton. Wow. <laughs> you got four more, Kennedy. You don't have to worry about I mean, it. <laughs> He's going for the stuff. Statement foul. Let them know, you know, this is your home court. Protect it. Don't come into my house, <laughs> says Kennedy Carter. It's no secret this team is now built around Carter. Yes. And Gary Blair has had to find the players that are okay with that. Yes. And it can be tough, but you have to know your role. And that's anywhere in college. You have to know your role and what do you need to do to take care of business for your team. Three and a half minute scoring drop for Marquette. Blocked in. Ends it right there. Alizea blocked in. Last year's Big East Player of the Year. This season's sixth Player of the Year. Was injured right for the start of Big E's play. So kept her coming off the bench even when she was back healthy. She did start final handful of games in the regular season, but was brought off the bench against Rice. She's called the start here against Texas A&M. Johnson, once again, really good position. But Van Clunen pulls down the rebound. That's where you want to see Johnson working from. Yes, that is where she's comfortable. That's where she operates her, her best game. Carter with the block. And the feathery touch on the other end. Kennedy Carter taking over. Hard to guard. You don't know what she's going to do. Pull up, drive, and now she got the floater to her game. In Asia, 
she knows how good she is. <laughs> yes, yes, you're gonna get plenty of smirks, smiles, and shimmies from Kennedy Carter. You she like knows it? it. She, yeah, carry yourself. Back, Back it, it up, up yeah. right? <laughs> Back it up. Here's Heidemann. She's got an edge, albeit a little more quiet. Three on the shot clock. Van Cluden heaves it up and hits. Only a 20% three-point shooter coming into the tournament. Hey, go for it. It's tournament time. Anything. It's March. Of course you can make those threes. <laughs> it's March. Johnson, again, great position. Just cannot find the angle. Yeah, she has to focus and finish. Blocked in, running the other way. Good feed, Marquette. Extending the lead. Wow, it is a battle hardened Marquette Golden Eagle squad. They had the life scared out of them. Yeah. Two days ago against Rice. Woke them up. Carter. And one. Pick me up, she says. That's the swag we're that talking about. Swag. She backs it up with the AM1. 30 points per game in her tournament career. And the biggest moments is when she has shined the brightest, including that 17 point comeback win against another Big East foe at this stage last season, DePaul. Blocked in, nice step back, going glass. Johnson to Jones for the rebound and fighting to keep possession. <laughs> Washington barely gets it across. Washington long two, too much. And Clooney a fantastic blockout against Johnson. Here's Blockton on Wells, nearly lost the handle. And Johnson secures it. Coming up in the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report, update you on the rest of the second round as Carter lets it fly. She got it again! Hello, she Kennedy is Carter! She's it now. <laughs> Look at the smile. I love it. She said, this it. is my show. Blocked in. Cannot get the response. Washington the rebound. Wells is running. She'll take it all the way into traffic. And Marquette basketball. Do you like Wells getting up that quick? I, I, I'm a little iffy about it. You know, in situations like this, it's time and score. I get it, but pull it back out. Get one shot. I'm not saying it has to go directly to Kennedy Carter, but just get one shot. So now Marquette doesn't have to set up everything. Now they get another chance. I don't know about that one. I, I love the scoring mentality. I love it, but you got to have an understanding of just possessions, how key and important they are during this time of the year. And here we go in the midst of Kennedy Carter mania. Marquette still has a chance to tie or take the lead going to the break. King weaving through, putting it up off glass. Tie game at 37. King with the post moves, I see you. And how do you like me now, says Marquette. Yeah, Kennedy Carter has 16 points, but this was the plan. Carolyn Keeker says, then if we're gonna lose this game, we are gonna make Kennedy Carter beat us at 64%. So one more half of basketball to play, and we'll send a team to Chicago in the Sweet 16. So early stoppage here. As we're trying to get the clock situated. And Gary Blair showed us he would ride the starters. Yeah. Only saw six players play for Gary Blair in the first half, and one 
I mean, you had barely any time on the on the clock for Kalen Martin. So it's dance with Hubrunya for the Aggies. Quick feet inside. Selena Lott comes up with the steal. Aggies have had a lot of success in the paint. They've really tried to pound it against Marquette's interior defenders. Van Clunen no good. Lot with the hustle play to Blockton. And here comes Carter running with Wells. Two Wells. Kayla Wells, the finish. A tough one at that. And she goes down hard. Andy Carter knew that she could draw Marquette's defender and she just kind of dished it off to her teammates, which is a good sign, but tough ball, tough ball. It's like she came down on the left elbow as well. The Aggies need Kayla Wells. She has helped really turn around the fortunes of this team after an early season injury to Aaliyah Wilson. To not convert the three-point play. But Wells averaging 12 more points per game than she did as a freshman. King and Heideman with 18 points for Marquette. The rest of the team with 19. Baseball pass picked off by Heideman. To Lott for three. Lott drops it. It's a simple turnover that just translates to a three-pointer. You don't want that, especially not now. Marquette seemed to slow down at the end of the second quarter in terms of getting up those shots in the first 10 seconds of the shot clock. Weaving, thought about giving it up. Gets it back, though. Second time, no. Jones the rebound. Third time, no. How about a fourth? And one, Indy Jones. Four times the charm. But this is where the Aggies have a huge edge. Second chance points on the glass. And that's just who India Jones is. She's just, she just has a knack just to get a rebound and just get extra possessions for Texas A&M. Jones top 10 nationally in rebounds per game coming into the tournament, beating the Aggies with an 11 and a half board mark. That's twice now the Aggies have not been able to get that free throw to convert the three-point play. King was bumped, no call, and air ball. I just, there's a smirk every time Carter <laughs> touches the ball. I want to know what she's thinking. She's probably thinking like, wow. Like First, she was probably saying they didn't get that call. And then second, she's like, so what am I about to do on offense? How can I score? And sometimes her coach is wondering what's about to happen. <laughs> Jones from the free throw line. And Johnson pulls down the rebound and gets fouled. Yeah, it was interesting talking with Gary Blair yesterday about what makes Kennedy Carter different. Yeah. This. She watches basketball nonstop. In his words, while her teammates and other players are watching Soul Train and Beverly Hills, yeah. Hillbillies, I, I don't think they're still watching those shows. Yeah, I don't think, no. Yeah. Yeah, but we got what he was saying. She's a student of the game, and while others are watching different TV shows, Netflix, we can say that, she's watching the game. And he says, whatever Russell Westbrook did the previous night, she comes out and tries to do with the practice. <laughs> nice rejection by Lott, the defensive stopper for the Golden Eagles. Wilborn, the dish, wide open is King, and makes the Aggies pay. Yeah, put up the three. Golden Eagles with the lead. They've been through their share of adversity, losing Erica Davenport in February. And having to figure out where to find that extra production. Carter following her own miss. Wilborn with the rebound. Here's the kick out. Eidemann thought about it. Free throw line. The lefty is pure. Uh, she plays the game in a much more quiet way than Carter, but she's keeping pace. Yeah, and she knows she knows where her strengths are. She knows not to always attack the basket, but just pull up right at there by the elbow area at the top of the key. 
or her areas where she can be efficient for her team. Wells took King down. Pull up jumper. Too strong. Hide him in with the board. The push pass to Lott. Great in transition. This is Marquette's game. They want to run. They want to run, get out and run, make you run. St. Aggies, catch us if you can. So two contrasting styles going head to head. Yes. Eidemann with 12, Carter with 16. Running again. Wilborn to Heidemann for three. Back to back triples. Gary Blair wants a timeout. Golden Eagles feeling right at home in the Lone Star State. They don't care whose court it is. They are out to run to play their brand of basketball, and it's working. Sweet 16 on the line, and Heidemann having her time to shine. See a collection of the Marquette faithful made that trip down from Milwaukee to see their Golden Eagles with a nine point lead over Texas A&M. Lowell Galindo, Asia Wilson, and Asia Natisha Heideman is coming out and playing her game. I mean, she's showing why she's the player of the year. She's doing everything her team needs her to do, the little things, getting great shots up. And credit her teammates, they're finding her while things are congested inside. And she's showing up, she's showing out, letting them know that this is her court. Cat was way too passive. And the overtime went against Rice from the jump. They came out, committed to playing this game at their pace. Wells, second thought, is a good one. Carter needs that supporting cast. The bump by Carter sends Heideman down. And he's on the three Kennedy Carter. Second, Second foul three. for Carter. Hyman with the quick three. Van Clunen fighting for the rebound. Off Marquette. Aggies basketball. Aggies ball. Washington, runner, and a foul on the floor, and it's going to go against Marquette. Golden Eagles foul number 15, Amani Wilborn. That's on Wilborn. And this is a big blow to Marquette because that is foul number four. Amani Wilborn. Oh. We'll see Wilborn number 15. He gets a push. little hand to the back of Johnson. A little push to Johnson. Four fouls right now. I don't think we're going to see her until probably late in the fourth. And that's tough because they need her. They need her energy. They need her just attacking. Tough loss for Marquette right now. Yeah, she's one of those five seniors, four which are healthy to play. So now for the foreseeable future, Johnson misses the free throw. Marquette will be down to three seniors. Yeah. Coming up tonight on ESPN, 7 o'clock Eastern time. You got UConn and Buffalo, 1992, the last time the Huskies lost in the second round. They've won 25 straight there. And Mississippi State and Clemson, 9 Eastern on ESPN, is the Bulldogs trying for their fourth straight Sweet 16. Johnson got the split at the line. Locked in, showing the handles. And Clunin, the drive, kicked it back out. As she saw Johnson, didn't want to go all the way in. Lot. Carter creates space. A little dip in the shoulder there, got away with it. Creating a lot of space. <laughs> Heidemann, driving kick, King to Blockton. 
Marquette whipping it around. King wants to go baseline. No look to Van Clunen and the finish. What do you think about this Marquette ball movement? Hey, they're going. And we saw it in practice yesterday. They were just pass, 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 score. There was not a lot of dribbling. They got a mismatch there with the guard in the post. You know, someone is on the other side of it, and she found them. 22 field goals, 18 assists. Washington with a good response to Johnson. Some crisp ball movement. Three-point ball game. Lockton almost did not see that pass. Jump stop. Drop. Can AM keep up with this pace? Yeah, they can. They can. Can all five? I'm not sure. But definitely the guards can just keep up the pace and just match their guards' energy. Johnson double teamed. Washington reads it and drives. And then Clooney comes up with it. We've seen Johnson fight through those double teams a lot. You don't want you there. Corner hesitation. Wells, the follow. Going back and forth here at College Station. You gotta love it. They're trying to get to Chicago. Let's go. <laughs> Punch your ticket. That is how it is done. Lauren Van Clooney wants it more than maybe anybody out on this court. The tournament is making it her own. Welcome back to College Station, where Lauren Van Clunen is making a name for herself in the tournament. She really is. She's showing up and she's showing out. She is just attacking the basket, going after her post players, creating an and one, which brings energy for her team. She is really just showing up. I'm, I'm like, I'm really just so proud and surprised, honestly, because you don't really hear about her. But she's just really doing everything for her team right now. Well, she's really increased her playing time, her production after the injury to Erica Davenport. I mean, Van Clunens is averaging 4.1 points per game yeah. on the season. Yet she scored 10 against Rice and is now up to 11 here against Texas A&M. Yeah, I mean, it just goes back to what we were talking about, just fulfilling your roles, knowing your role and understanding what they need from you. Marquette also has to understand Get the lead while you can. Yes. Because no lead is comfortable with Gary Blair and Texas A&M. What they have done in the past two tournaments, 21-point comeback against Penn in the first round two years ago, the largest comeback in tourney history, down 17 against the Big East opponent in DePaul, came all the way back for the fourth largest comeback in tourney history. Yeah, and you just kind of got to get the lead. But biggest thing is just don't get comfortable. Don't just think that you can settle down and take a deep breath because, like we all say, basketball is a game of runs. It can flip on you so quickly. Right there. Wells, yep. take lead out to Washington. Washington's going to take it herself. Maybe should have slowed it down. King on the giddy up. Hesitation to get past Johnson. What a slight hesitation by King to create that. Yeah. She kind of drew Johnson up. Her body lifted and she just took her sides and her quickness and went around her. Eight point lead for the Golden Eagles. Carter coming off baseline. Has a three. Gets the three. Come on now, she should not be roaming around with no one trailing behind her or close to her in her face. You can't want it to change up the looks on Carter. That wasn't a good one. That was not. Let's not go to that look anymore. <laughs> oh, King trying to put a Kennedy Carter move on the original. <laughs> Under a minute left. Until we go to the fourth quarter. Five point lead for Marquette. Wells open for three. Lot with the rebound. Defense sagged off her with Carter there. Carter gets her hand on it. And it will be Marquette basketball.
Lockton checks in for Anderson. Heidemann will inbound. Danielle King directing traffic. Six second difference. Locked in. Step back on Wells. Rattles out. Rebound Jones. Carter heads up. She knows the situation. Through traffic. Give her another one. And a shimmy from Kennedy Carter. And a shimmy. Too much sauce, Kennedy Carter. I like it. I like it. Normally people get frantic when the clock's winding down. You can tell Kennedy just practices these shots in the in the backyard. Just five, four. I love it. <laughs> and the shimmy. The sauce, as you said. <laughs> Too much sauce. Got it. Gary Blair was correct when he said Pinky Kate is over. She is A OK. <laughs> So two and a half before we go to the fourth quarter. Carter will get a little breath here. Yeah. She's going to have to have a big fourth for Texas A&M. Heidemann will heave it, saying go deep. A little too deep. Nice little arm there, though. <laughs> so trying to figure out where A&M will end up with this basketball. Saying it was tipped. Yeah. And that's a good call. So it will be Marquette ball as it went off the hands of Jada Walton. Did that pass almost hit the jumbo tron as well? It might have took it. It was just like right below the camera up there. Gary Blair wants to make sure they got this right. Can't blame them. Yeah. And crowd here at Texas A&M is happy. responding to the replay. They don't like the look. So Marquette basketball with 2.1 in the third. Late change as Fingola comes in. King goes to the bench. We can only see if they made the good call because the basketball never lies. So we're going to see here. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to see right now. Van Clooney, hesitation, does not get it off. Ball don't lie. If the ball does not lie. <laughs> Buckle up, everybody. Tight going into the fourth here at College Station. with the yell leaders here at College Station. And it has been a good crowd and a loud one at that here at College Station. Cheering on her fight Aggies as Texas A&M is trying to go to the Sweet 16 in back-to-back -back seasons. And it's going to take a little more drama to get there. 59-57 Marquette leads going into the fourth quarter. Marquette is on the cusp of something they've never done before. It was a goal that this senior class set out to accomplish as sophomores to make it to the Sweet 16 for the first time in program history. Chicago is on the line. Lowell Galindo here with Asia Wilson. Backdoor cut. Carter takes it away from Heidemann. And Heidemann's coming up looking at that left hand. What are you looking for in this fourth quarter? A lot of scoring. <laughs> a lot of scoring from just, you know, from Kennedy Carter and from Heidemann as well. So, I don't know. I'm just looking for a lot of energy and a lot of scoring and good basketball. And that's what they're going to have to, that's what it's going to have to take to not just make it to Chicago, but pass there as well. Methodical possession there from AM does not lead to a good shot from Washington. Expect Carter 
to the key figure late. She scored the last seven points of the second quarter, last six of the third quarter. Blocked in for three. Marquette, a huge turnaround from the way they shot outside against Rice. 12 points now for Blockton. Last year's Big East Player of the Year. Carter once again gets separation as Heidemann goes down. And the ball is off Marquette, and it will stay with the Aggies. Washington to inbound to Jones. Really nice play. Everyone's worried about Carter and where she's going, but it opens up the inside. It opens up for people like India Jones to get simple, easy baskets. Jones has eight. Keeger wanted to keep the supporting cast in check. They're starting to free up a little bit more. King tries to get rid of it to Blockton. Carter is there. Got a piece of it. And Selena Lott has drawn the assignment of staying with Kennedy Carter. For right now. The feed, Carter to Jones. One point game. Locked in, trying to take on two Aggie defenders. Wins that fight and draws the foul. The road to the Frozen Four ices up tonight at 7 Eastern with the NCAA Men's Ice Hockey Selection Special on ESPNU and the ESPN app. Visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. Locked in an 87% free throw shooter coming into the tournament. Uh-oh. Those count. You have to make your free throws. Those are huge in games like this. And getting to Chicago, staying there. Marquette's all-time leading scorer gets the split at the line. She'll go to the bench. And Amani Wilborn will check in. Wilborn, the senior from Milwaukee. Hometown kid for the Golden Eagles. Carter, the long pass to Jones. Jones, big to big, feeding Johnson. Tied up at 63. Jones got a piece of it. And comes up with it. She's just a hustler. She just goes after everything, every rebound, every loose ball. The 50-50, the intangibles of the game. India Jones has them a lot for Texas A&M. Here's Johnson. Sierra Johnson, no. Van Clooney. Nick and Grit for the rebound. Nice move. Hiding him, but got a whistle on Kayla Wells. No basket. No continuation there? I think we should give it to her, but hey, I'm not a ref, you know? And you never will be. <laughs> now number three on Wells. Marquette shooting just a tick under 50% from the field. Came into the tournament as the fourth highest scoring team in America. King, Carter, smothered it. But foul on Carter. Number three on Kennedy Carter. Danielle King on the line from Marquette, shooting two. Danielle King is not back down from this SEC opposition. 14 points for her. And the loss against Mississippi State earlier this year had 27 points against the Bulldogs, one shy of her career high. Oh, 
It's the seniors of Marquette against the sophomore standout of Texas A&M and Kennedy Carter. Carter probing. Jones follows it up. She has been on today. 12 points. 12 rebounds for Jones. Right on cue, the response from Wilborn. This is just such a back and forth game. Like, I knew it was going to be quick. But man, they are bringing it. They call Wilborn March Monty as a Monty Wilborn. It's her birthday in March and typically saves her best basketball for this time of the year. It's mm, a nice little touch. And here she comes again. March Monty giving it up to Lott. Selena Lott for three. No. Rebound yanked down by Wells. Carter getting past Lott. She'll keep going. Pull up Jay. Gets her own miss and puts it back. Tied up, 67. She just locked eyes on you, Asia. <laughs> hey, it's go time. It's go time. She gave you a look. I know. <laughs> like, I was playing against her. Like, I'm not out there. Heidemann, cold-blooded response. Hey. Letitia Heidemann. I can do it too. I love the Marquette bench going bowling. <laughs> Waiting for Carter's response. Washington wide open and she hits it. Heidemann goes down, whistle on Wells. As good as it gets with a trip to the Sweet 16 on the line, tied up at 70 in the fourth quarter. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? Welcome back to College Station. Lowell Galindo here with Asia Wilson. Trip to Chicago on the line. 4-10 left. It's tied up at 70. And it's time now to take a look at her Capital One rewarding performance. And it is Natisha Heidemann. She's in triple-double territory. She is. She honestly is. I, I say go for it. And she's just, she's creating so much energy for her team. She's knocking down the big shots at the right time for her team. And they're just all falling behind her. She's creating in ones for herself, taking it off the dribble, knowing exactly where she needs to be at the right time. And I mean, hey, it's nothing much you can say. She deserves this rewarding of performance for her team. There is a correlation typically between the way Heidemann plays as Van Clunen goes down and the way Marquette follows. When she's on, Marquette is. And typically you know from the start of the game. Yes. And it was there from the yes. start. She came out with just this, this fire in her eyes, and she's going, if it's hitting shots, hitting open threes, contested threes, that's her game. And they just all rally behind her. You can just tell that they feed off so well off of her. Jambria Washington picked up the foul, her second. So that will send Van Clunen to the line for two. Van Clunen has been clutch as well. Now 13 points with a sophomore standout from Mason, Ohio, who has made the most increased playing time following the season-ending injury of Erica Davenport. Marquette has never been to the Sweet 16. Gary Blair has made a habit of it here in College Station. What will she do next? It's on the mind of everybody here inside Reed Arena. Jada Walton now checks in. Washington will get it back. All right, now back in the hands of Carter. Deep three. Not too deep for Kennedy Carter. <laughs> Aggies lead by one. Big time, Bucky, with the shimmy. Do your dance, Kennedy. Do your dance, girl. Do your dance. That's a big time play. March is made for <laughs> players like Kennedy Carter. Hey. 
I mean, we knew it was going up. We knew that sitting at the table. They should have known that. What's the point in doing it? Do you, you can't have a little style along of with course. it. Of course. Got to have a swag to it. 30.3 points per game in her tournament career. She's at 29 today against Marquette. Tonight on SportsCenter after Clemson and Mississippi State on ESPN. Well, we could be talking about Kennedy Carter a little bit more. 16 teams trying to make it all the way to Tampa Bay. James Harden followed up his historic performances. Basketball's greatest crossover artist on SC feature. SportsCenter tonight. Marquette, your response, please. Washington hounding Heidemann. She gets free. Leaves it short. Scrum in the hands of Wilborn, and she calls timeout and gets it. Heads on play after that long miss. I mean, right now, I, I'm sure that Marquette's really need to get Heidemann the basketball. The ball should be in her hands at all times right about now because she is the one that's really performing right now. So I think, honestly, they're probably drawing up a play for her. I would if I was a coach, <laughs> especially if I'm trying to get to the 16. I'm going to my player that's really on triple-double watch right now. Like, that is huge. That's my senior. That's my leader. They got to get her to basketball. They feeling any pressure at this point, knowing that they've never been there? I, I don't think they feel the pressure. I, I, probably the coaching staff, yes. <laughs> but as a player, I don't think they're feeling the pressure because they, they feel as if they deserve to be here and they're going to work their hardest to get there. So no pressure, just playing the game of basketball. This is just another game. Five seniors, they've all started since day one as Carolyn Keeger revamped this Marquette program. They have built it up on their shoulders to this point. Pickpocket by Walton. I'll let the crowd tell you whose basketball it is. I mean, Walton is a player you don't see much of, but she comes in, she does the little things, gets you another possession, and she's good. That's her role. Tell you, go back and watch her recent games. And lately, she has developed that move, that little wraparound yeah. pink pocket. You've seen that a lot from Walton lately. Yeah. And she was the player that started when Carter was out in the SEC tournament with the broken pinky. And held her own. Jones, nice move against Anderson. Forces some contact. Anderson with the rebound. Marquette trying to take the lead. Old Eagles setting something up. Good old chin offense. X screen, yep, good old chin. Pass and pass and go off the post that's at the high top. So who's this going to? You gotta go to Heidemann. Someone should set a screen for her, but it has to go to her. Three on the clock, she's trapped. Heaves it up, no. Van Clunen with the board, fresh 30 for the Golden Eagles. Aggies did everything right, except finish. with the rebound. Timeout, Texas A&M. What timeout. a game for Kennedy Carter. 29 points on 12 of 26, shooting eight rebounds, four assists, a couple of blocks, at least three shimmies as well, if you're gonna put that in the box score. And this is what it's about, every team. The goal is to make it to Tampa Bay, where coverage of the Women's Final Four begins Friday, April 5th at 6.30 Eastern on ESPN2 and the ESPN app, the championship game, April 7th, 6 o'clock Eastern on ESPN.
Have some fond memories yeah, of Tampa Bay. Of course. But that's my first Final Four. I will never forget Tampa Bay. Yes, we lost. But to be a freshman and make it to the Final Four, that's a good feeling. 2011, Indianapolis. That's when Gary Blair finally cut down the nets. He has a player to build around. It makes you believe that the best is still yet to come for Texas A&M, regardless of how this one ends. Less than 90 seconds on the clock. Get ready for a heavy dose of Kennedy Carter. This is her time. Ribs out, but she gets it back. In the follow, no. Jones puts it up and will go to the line. So the Aggies flexing the muscle on the offensive glass. They are. I mean, this is no different than India Jones' regular old game. Just going after the rebounds, just making, giving them everything that they need to just continue to score, continue to have the basketball on their side. So Envy Jones will go to the line, only a 55% free throw shooter coming into the tournament. 0 for 1 today, make it 0 for 2. Blockton will check in. Lott leaves the game, we'll see. This is gonna be some offense for defense as Lott is the top defender for Marquette, who has been hounding, doing her best to do so against Carter. Jones with the split. Two-point game. Blocked in, ties it up. Less than a minute here in College Station. Chicago on the line. Gary Blair says a trip to the Sweet 16 would be one of the most rewarding accomplishments in his historic run here at Texas A&M. His two captains transferred in the offseason. No one counted the Aggies part of the postseason equation, yet here they are. But they're going to have to make a stand on defense now. As Marquette is playing for the seniors on the cusp of the first ever trip to the Sweet 16 for Marquette. Carolyn Keeger, the all-time leader in assists, running the point back in her playing days with Marquette. Now trying to coach the Golden Eagles to a place they've never been before. So Wilborn goes to the line for two. After the foul on Jones. Marquette by one. See, as a player, this is where I wish we still had the one and one. It kind of made it a little bit more fun, a little bit more dramatic. I mean, two shots is great, but one and one, you still get to play a little bit. Clunin, the rebound. Lane violation. Ooh, yeah, we got a lane violation as Johnson got the left foot in. It was pretty much a wash. This actually could end up working out in AM's favor. Yeah. Because Van Clunin had the rebound. Correction, line violation on number 40, not a personal foul. One more free throw. Second chance, and Wilborn tells the crowd here in College Station to hush up a little bit. <laughs> Will that be the silencer? To her. So we've got 36.2 on the game clock, 30 on the shot clock. What's the approach for Texas A&M here? The same approach it's been for the past two years. Get the basketball to Kennedy Carter. Let her then work. And then right now, when you have someone like India Jones who is attacking the glass, oh, it puts 
a lot more pre it puts if you don't even have pressure on a player like Kenny Carr because she's like if I miss I know I have somebody down there that can rebound the basketball so right now for Texas A&M set a bunch of screens land your screens and get each other open Carter leading score with 29 points four from eight from the field We're in College Station, and this has been, as you would expect, a very pro Texas A&M crowd getting loud at the right time, hushing up at the appropriate time to let Kennedy Carter do her work. Five fouls on Texas A&M. Only one team foul on Marquette here in the fourth quarter. Aggies with one timeout left, Golden Eagles with two. Kennedy Carter hit the game winner on this court. This same type of moment a year ago to knock off DePaul and send the Aggies to the Sweet 16. Can she deliver again? It's in her hands. Selena Lott checks back in and commits the foul. We saw that switch with Keeger. Lott came out. Marquette was on offense, back in to try to lock down Carter. A two second differential. Carter to Washington. Washington gives nice the Yankees shot. the lead. See, they normally play off of the point guards because they're thinking, okay, they can't score from deep, kind of let them do their own thing, but you got to watch out for things like this. How about the answer to those that call her a bull hog? Game on the line, I'll give it up. And Chambria Washington does the rest. Knocks it down. Make them respect you, Washington. Make them respect you. And again, that is the player that Gary Blair says has been the biggest difference maker for this team this year. Brings that Juco mentality, the nitty gritty to this Texas A&M team. She's their floor general. She does everything Coach Blair tells her to, and she just kind of operates her team, makes sure her team is rolling the way that she needs them to be. No matter if she has a Kennedy Carter, no matter if she has a Kayla Wells, she makes sure that they're organized and things are ran the way that they should. Shambria Washington having her March moment. What does Carolyn Kiger draw up here? You know, right now, it's all about the little things. It's just whatever she draws up, they have to make sure that they make their cuts are clean, their screens are clean, they land their screens, and make sure that they're open so there's no gray area. Everything's black and white. There's nothing, there's no question marks. Don't let March march, because we know anything can happen in March. But right now, they have to be clean and organized. I feel you, kid. I'm this feeling little the guy. same way right now. <laughs> he sums it all up. <laughs> that is a mood. <laughs> Wait to see if his team can pull it out. Here we go, 22.9. <laughs> Separating one of these teams from Chicago. Timeout. Timeout Carolyn Keeger. 30 second timeout with 8.7 on the clock. What did you see from AM defensively there? Just no foul. They were quick. They knew that they were going on. They knew everything was going to be crazy, but they just tried not to foul. Marquette has never been to the Sweet 16 before. They are a shot away from accomplishing that goal. The vision from Carolyn Keeger when she took over at her alma mater, sold a senior class that is now five strong on doing something that's never been done before, even though there was no evidence that it could be done. They bought in and are a shot away from going to Chicago. King to inbound. And it comes up. Carter does it. And fouled. Rips and repeat. When you need a play, Kennedy Carter delivers. You 
you know, we talk about what's going on, what's the plays, but the biggest thing is just getting the ball inbound. Timeout, Texas A&M, 30 seconds, timeout. So timeout for Gary Blair. That is a tough one there. Yeah. So Marquette could not get a shot. They called the timeout, then could not get the inbound. Yes, that's the hardest thing is inbounding the basketball. Not only for them not to foul them, but on the offensive end, just making sure that you find somebody that's open, clean, and she wasn't. It's tough. Steals, blocks, rebounds, assists, buckets, shimmy, swag. <laughs> so 5.6 on the clock. Kayla Wells will inbound. And it goes to Carter. Van Clunen does not foul. Johnson to Wells. She'll slow it down. And it's fouled by Anderson with 1.6 on the clock. Golden Eagles ball number 20. Alkane Anderson, her second. Ball number four. Aggies ball. There were players that did not want to play with Kennedy Carter. Yeah. They are now elsewhere. Carter has found a supporting cast and has learned how to play with them. Yes, that's the biggest thing. Learning how to play with them. 1.6 from going to the Sweet 16. Lott will foul Carter with .9 on the clock. And so that will mean free throws for Carter. Smiling it, loving it. Carter to make it a three-point game. Misses. The heave from Heidemann. Off the mark. Aggies going to Chicago behind another brilliant performance from Kennedy Carter. It's her team.